Hello Internet, it's uh, Skorikowski, and for today's GM Toolbox, we're going to talk about handouts. A lot of game masters like myself, we love giving out different maps and letters and riddles and different things for our players to be able to hold and be able to interact with. And for most of those, you can just use standard white printer paper, there's no problem with that. However, every once in a while, you do have some handout that you want to give a little bit something extra special for. After sneaking into the captain's cabin, you discover a treasure map. Huh. I guess the Pirate King uses a laser printer. <laughs> Why is all the toner gone? <laughs> Now the first thing, of course, you can try is just to pick up different paper. There's all sorts of different nice thick parchment papers out there for resumes and that sort of thing, and it's perfectly fine. However, resume paper can cost quite a bit. So, for Game Masters on a budget, let me give you a couple different ideas of what you can do to spice up your handouts. Now, this is just a, a simple little map that I found off the internet. I think it's actually from a children's coloring book. But what we're going to do with it is we're going to tea stain it. So, in order to tea stain a map, first thing you have to do is make some tea, wait for it to cool, that's very important, and then just using the tea bag as a sponge, rub the tea down across the piece of paper, make sure that you get it fully saturated, flip it over, make sure you get both sides, and then take it out and set it down on a piece of cloth. That way when it dries it doesn't fuse to the bottom of whatever pan that you used. Another method you could use is coffee, and using a folded up paper towel, you just rub coffee across it in the exact same manner, make sure you get both sides, set it out to dry, and as it dries it's going to darken. And what you end up with is a very nice stained piece of paper that doesn't look like it just came out of the Xerox machine at work. This is another one that I did where I then tore the edges off from around the borders and then I crumpled it up a few times and distressed it to give it more of a tactile feel or something for the players to be able to enjoy as they're holding it at the table. Now this method works great if it's something that you're printing off of your computer. That way if you screw it up you can just print off another one and tea stain that one until you get a good one. But if it's something that I'm actually going to be hand drawing or handwriting myself, I would not want to tea stain it just because I would be too worried that the ink or whatnot would run and would ruin whatever the handout was supposed to be. In the case of those, what you could do is either stain a blank piece of paper and then draw your map or your letter out on the paper after it's already stained. But another option could be just to use a manila envelope. I love these things. They're a nice thick piece of paper, they've got a good golden brown to them, and they're also a lot larger than you're going to find your standard printer paper in, so that way it's not in your standard 8.5 by 11 size. This is a map that we did for a campaign where the characters were all sailing in the underdark and the sunken seas beneath the earth. And we used this map for quite a while in that campaign, and it was a good size, but it's really just a manila envelope that's unfolded. This is a riddle that we did for another campaign where it's all distressed and torn, and there's parts of the riddle that are missing or smudged out, and it's burned, and it's got blood stains on it. One quick trick to do is if you do want to put blood stains on the map, best thing that I have personally found is just to take some cheap watercolors. This thing cost me like a buck. Mix the brown and the red together, it gives you a nice dried blood color, and then you splatter it up or get enough hand prints or anything else on your handout. That way it's nice and fun and it makes it seem like something that's been through a lot. Another method to use is to employ a wax seal. Uh, sealing wax you can pick up at a lot of craft stores. It's not very expensive. It's got a very hard plasticky feel, a lot more than candle wax does. And this little box right here is probably going to do me for the rest of my life. This is the letter that we used for Ravenloft that had the B stamped on it, and it's just a manila envelope with the letter written inside, but it gave a great effect, much more than if I had just handed them a, a printout from the letter that was inside the module, or any of the nice printed ones that are out there. This one felt more real, and the players could interact with it better. Now, of course, there's a ton more options out there. In a lot of modern-day settings, people will actually print uh, newspaper paper off of their printer, and that way all the newspaper articles that their characters are finding in-game feel just like they came out of a newspaper. Uh, personally, my own printer hates that paper. I've tried it, and it's been a failure every time. But a lot of people can do it, and it works. And there's a thousand other little options out there in order to spice up your handouts. So Game Masters, if you've never tried doing any sort of method to spice up your handouts, besides just you know giving them a standard 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, here's a couple quick and easy and very inexpensive tricks you can try. 
That is it for today, so if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Of course, if you want to see some more of my Game Master tips or reviews or other videos like that, just hit the subscribe button. Until next time, gamers, you have a great day.